Hey there, fellows. So here's the deal. We were preparing a car for yet another experiment, and look at what we found in the trunk. An aluminum flywheel and a couple of really heavy lead pistons. By the way, if you haven't seen that video, make sure to check it out. It was a pretty cool one. Anyways, so pistons in factory form, they're originally made from aluminum, right? But for some odd reason, we've never tried making a flywheel out of lead. And I suggest we make us a flywheel out of lead and see how it works. Let's get to it. In order to make a mold to cast the flywheel, first we need to dry the sand, then sift it to remove any stones or debris. From there we take our dry, uncontaminated sand, mix it with so-called liquid glass in the correct proportion, pour it into the box, firmly pack it, place the flywheel, press it in, and the mold is done. We have about 15 kilos worth of lead, but I'm afraid that might not be enough. I guess we'll start pouring it and from there we'll see. And so here we have the billet that we're going to be turning into a flywheel. It's made of lead, that's all good. And as for how much it weighs, it's almost 18 kilos. Now I suggest we machine it and have a look at the finished product. Let's do this. Okay, we've taken the flywheel off of the lathe, now we just need to drill some holes for the clutch pressure plate, as well as for mounting it onto the crank. For the pressure plate I'll drill all the way through, and uh, fit nut certs on the other side, because lead is soft and the thread is probably going to be pulled right out. So look, we have got the stock flywheel for Alada. Let's pick it up with the scale. It weighs 6 kilos, 75 grams. Terrific, now let's try the lead flywheel. See how much it's going to weigh after all of the machining. It is definitely not 6 kilos, I can tell you that much. 11.75. That's almost twice as heavy. We have made a few heavy flywheels, but a lead one is a first. Okay, now I suggest we fit this to an engine, install a gearbox, and of course see how it's going to work. We'll do it. We've got the lead flywheel fitted to a car, and now it is time for some testing. A good place to start would be to start it, simply. Here we go. And it runs, check that out. The ring gear even stuck in place, and that is good. Okay, so this works. I actually started it with the clutch pressed in. I totally forgot that we we're running a lead flywheel, but okay. Runs nice. Smooth. And with how well this started, I don't think I'll be able to resist. Clutch in, into gear. Better try setting off. Let me try slowly setting off. 
It's moving. It moves, and that is great. I do get the feeling that the clutch pedal is moving further and further away, though. I might be imagining that. Perhaps it was already this way. But the important thing is that the car runs. So far, so good. We are moving. Second gear, excellent. Nothing slipping. That is just awesome. It feels just like any regular car. No abnormalities, everything is just fine. Feels just like any other lot. Although, I am noticing that if I give the engine some revs, after getting off the gas, they come down very slowly. It revs up just fine. Engine doesn't feel lethargic. Oh, wait, it actually is a tiny bit lazy to rev up, yeah. It revs up pretty smoothly as well. But the revs are very slow to drop. For the obvious reason that the flywheel is now really heavy. The acceleration is pretty smooth. When you get on the gas, it's not super eager and enthusiastic to accelerate. It does so in a really smooth fashion, with how much the flywheel weighs. Also, when you let off, the car rolls for quite a while. There is not a lot of engine braking. There is some, but it's not a lot. When we let off the gas without pressing in the clutch, we're all used to intense engine braking action occurring. In this case, it's not nearly as intense as it normally would be. It also revs up slowly. Okay, so that really heavy lead flywheel, it actually works very well. There is no slip, it's not getting bent out of shape. The gears change all right. It's just like any other flywheel. But then there was the smooth acceleration effect. Which is to say that the car does not abruptly pick up and go when you press the gas. And another effect of the flywheel being so heavy is the fact that... the revs are slow to go back down. But if you need to get going, you put the transmission into first, and the engine is more than happy to pull at super low revs. You can lug it around, the car sets off, engine operation is nice and smooth, and the car just starts to move instead of stalling. That's a pretty nice benefit. But you see, here's the thing. A flywheel can of course overheat. If you were to subject it to abnormal amounts of stress, you got the smell of roasted clutch and overheated flywheel, you might have even seen parts of the clutch assembly go blow. Yeah, those components can get very warm. Not to mention you can get the friction material to start smoking, which we've had happen to us a number of times. I think it's time for some durability testing. See if this lead flywheel is able to cope with that sort of stress. Yeah, let's see how much punishment this flywheel can take. Let the durability testing begin. I'd better get some goggles on, just in case. Because if it melts, we don't know where the lead might get thrown. Yeah, I do have a good view of it, crucially. Here we go. My foot is trying to release the clutch on reflex so that the car gets going. But I'm gonna avoid doing that. Come on now. I am starting to feel the not so pleasant smell of roasted clutch. Flywheel is holding up though. And I'm hearing noises. 
What is that noise? Some sort of buzzing. Some kind of screeching noise. And the pedal is going to the floor. Are there supposed to be sparks? And we have sparks flying. What is going on? We got sparks, clutch pedal is on the floor. I do not understand what's going on. Why won't it come back up? Flywheel is still holding up though. Clutch is no longer working and we have smoke. And get it out of gear. Oh, there we go. Can't get it into gear, though, with the clutch on the floor. Clutch pedal is on the floor. That's odd. Box is in neutral. But I still see sparks. Let's start it while it's in gear. Hold the brakes. Yeah, let's go. Here we go. What is going on in there? Looks like the wheels are spinning. Yeah, they definitely are. And the clutch has failed completely. Can I press it in just a little bit? Just a tiny bit. No dice. Clutch pedal is stuck for whatever reason. Can't fathom why. Okay, clutch works now. Yeah, I see it. Clutch works, but the ring gear has detached. Look at that. This is starting to get dicey. The lead flywheel. This is scary, man. What the flywheel is now doing, holy cow. This is very bad. The engine still works, though. Look at that. The engine is running, but the flywheel is not moving. Yeah, that's a wrap. Okay, guys, let's have a look at what's left of that flywheel. And the clutch, for that matter. So the first thing to fall off was the ring gear. It is anything but round. It was bouncing around in there. Of course it got bent out of shape. The pressure plate has become blue. It was perfectly fine before, and now it's colored blue. So apparently it overheated. As for what caused the overheating, friction, of course. It was, of course, rubbing up against the clutch disc. It looks like it was burning real bad on the clutch pressure plate side. The discoloration tells us that it got up to a really high temperature. But then you could already tell by looking at the pressure plate. As for the flywheel side, well, this is rather interesting. 
It does seem to be in somewhat better shape. You can also see that bits of lead have stuck themselves onto the friction material. And they are there because this is what has become of the flywheel. It is severely deformed. The hub section got ripped apart. It was starting to come into contact with the transmission casing. Yeah, this was severely deformed. Apparently there was some small imbalance, and uh, you can tell by looking at one of the holes that that's where the inertia was pulling it. Pulling it off-center. So everything got torn apart and broken, and that's all I got for you. Make sure to sub so you don't miss our future experiments. Alright, catch you later.